I recently lost a very close family member and I've just helped a couple of my clients who lost a spouse. It is incredibly hard and it's harder if you have to wrestle with computer stuff and clouds and passwords. There's a lot more of that these days. So this video is for you if you want to help your family as much as you can with getting things rounded up into the right places and just making the technology bit a little bit easier. Obviously, there's a whole lot to think about, so I'm only going to talk about some of the most important tips in this video. Uh, I made a one-page document, a PDF, that you can print off and keep for yourself so you don't need to remember everything I say in this video. Uh, I do recommend printing it, filling it out with pen and paper, keep it for yourself, put it in a safe, give it to a loved one, that kind of thing. The first thing I recommend doing is uh, with your Apple ID and your iCloud, you can now update the legacy contact info. So the legacy contact is, that's the person who will get access to everything that's in your iCloud. Documents, notes, contacts, calendars, photos, all of that stuff. So to do that, on your Mac, you go to the Apple menu in the top left, and then System Preferences, and then click on Apple ID in the top right, and then on the left under uh, Password and Security, you'll see down at the bottom, this is new. This is a new option you can do legacy contact and you click manage and then here you click add to add someone as a legacy contact. Apple is really strict with their security so if you do this it will make it a whole lot easier to get into your iCloud. Next I recommend going into each of your various different accounts Gmail, Apple ID, iCloud, uh, Dropbox, all the different clouds and email accounts that you use and update the recovery info. So that's the info that you would use if you ever forget your password and you need to do a password reset. So the recovery info, it's usually just a cell phone and an email, but when you forget your password, that's the email that you would get a password reset email sent to or so, same with a cell phone. You can text a code to your cell phone and then you can reset the password. I'll show you how to do that now for Gmail and for Apple ID. The process is similar for other ones. So on the Mac, just go to the Apple menu in the top left and then System Preferences, and then go into Apple ID and then click on Password and Security on the left. And then this under trusted phone numbers, this is where you wanna make sure that you have your current phone number. You can just hit edit here and you can add your phone number there. For Gmail, you just go to your Gmail and sign in at the actual Gmail website. And then up in the top right, you click on your little, uh, your little face or your, your icon up here, and then go to manage your Google account. And then sometimes it asks you for your password, for your Gmail password. Uh, then on the left, you just click security. And then here under uh, ways we can verify it's you, you want to make sure that you have a current phone number and a current second email address here. So that info is really important to update. Once you've updated that for Apple and for Gmail, you can go through some of the other accounts that you have. It generally looks the same. You go into password and security, and then go into recovery info, and just make sure all of that is current. Passwords. It really, really helps to have all your passwords in one place and verified correct. It could be uh, a little black book, uh, it could be the built-in Mac password manager. That's where you go into a website in Safari and it says, do you want to save this password in your keychain? You say yes to that. Um, I love the keychain. It works very, very well. Um, it could be a, a locked note in your notes app. I'll show you that in a second. Um, it could even be an app like one password or Dashlane, things like that. The point, the most important thing is that they're all in one place and all 
verified, current, cleaned up, deleted the wrong ones, that kind of thing. So on the Mac, if you use Safari, you can just say yes to save your passwords whenever you sign into things. And when you want to see those and, and see what the password is, you just go to the Safari menu in the top left. You go to Preferences, and then you go to Passwords up in the top here. And you can do your fingerprint, or the password it's asking for here is your computer password. So this is the password that you type when you restart your computer. So then you'll have a list of saved passwords here, and they will all be verified and current, assuming you've gone through and, and done all of that. Another option that I really like is the locked notes when in the notes app. I've talked about this in other videos. If you make a new note and put all of your legacy info into that note, you can lock it with the, the little lock up in the top here, and then it requires a specific password or your fingerprint to unlock this note. And then just make sure that you give your loved one this info, you can put it on the little checklist that uh, I made that you ideally printed off. Next up is files and photos and things like that. It really helps, again, to have everything in one place. Maybe it's all in iCloud, desktop and documents. Maybe it's all in Dropbox or it's all in OneDrive. Uh, ideally, all your family photos are all in one place. Uh, if you get them all into the, the Photos app and syncing through iCloud uh, it makes it really easy to pass that on to family and loved ones. I keep it pretty simple. I just go into the Finder here and I have the Documents folder under iCloud Drive. This is the one that I use and I make subfolders in here and I just keep everything in this set of folders here. They're safe on my computer, they're syncing with the cloud, but again, most importantly, they're all in one place. and as organized as possible. Lastly, and this one is super important, tell your family to keep your cell phone active for a few months after you pass away. These days, when you do a password reset or you sign in somewhere, it'll often send a six-digit code to your phone, and sometimes it's a text message that looks like this. Sometimes it is a uh, iCloud pop-up thing with six numbers that looks like this and you want them to be able to get those. If they need to reset passwords, maybe you wrote down the wrong password in your, your uh, logs, in your notes, it just makes it way easier to get into accounts afterwards if the cell phone is still active. Yes, this is sad and it's scary and it's hard. We can help, we can make things easier. If you want to book a consult, we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one and we'll help you round everything up into one place so that it's a, a little bit easier for your family. If you found this helpful and you want some private Mac coaching with me or someone from my team, just head to macandhome.com slash booking. We work with people all over the world. We'll help you with whatever is on your Mac problems list, and you will never feel judged or shamed for whatever mess you are in. Tip number one, first tip, number one, one.